Let me introduce myself. Like I'm Pranthi. I'm working for uh, Molecular Imaging, Imaging Center, Department of Molecular Biotechnology um, and Health Sciences at the Uni uh, University of Torino. Um, coming to the project team, we have Dario Longo, who is working for Institute of Biostructures and Bioimaging and uh, CNR, myself and Walter Dastro. Uh, we have Jim Karim and Yusin who are working on, on this project. Um, so let me uh, briefly explain the uh, project scientific and technical background uh, before we go into the project. So basically the preclinical image facilities generate like huge amount of uh, volume of biomedical imaging data sets. Uh, this centers usually lack standard platforms for managing, storing or sharing the image data. Uh, data sets are usually stored in personal computers or local databases, like making it not findable and shareable for the, for the people who are looking for this kind of uh, projects. So um, local uh, resources can be accessed only by authorized users because they are in a um, university or like in a particular facility. Uh, there are several platforms have been developed for uh, clinical imaging, we have a lot of examples and among this, uh, uh, which focuses more both on clinical and preclinical is like x uh, Excuse me? I think it was some background noise. Um, if everybody who is uh, not speaking can mute, that would be great. Please continue, Clancy. Yeah, um, okay. So XNAT is an open source image informatics platform developed by Neuroinformatics Research Group at Washington University. And uh, it is more customizable and thanks to its extensibility that XNAT can be used to support a wide range of image-based projects. So the project goal is to enable the data discovery and uh, reuse of image medical image data sets by deploying the federated XNAT to sync the medical image data sets from local XNAT instances. And also annotating the images, uh, data sets by adding the metadata or the custom variables we can call to allow the findability of these images. So here is like a small uh, picture that, that explains how the central XNAT and how the uh, institutions which has the XNAT instances can sync all their projects, which are uh, which are done by them, and then to the central XNAT through the XSync plugin that we develop, uh, which are customized and developed by us. And uh, the person, the researcher who is uh, who is reaching the central XNAT server can have all the uh, projects which are shared publicly in the central XNAT on HPC for AI. So. So basically the federation means the action of forming the state, uh, forming states or organizations into a single group or under centralized control. So to explain it, uh, how we did, uh, how we uh, implement this XNAT federation is like, we have this XNAT instance on HPC for AI, which is like, which has high computational and storage capacity as a central XNAT. And we have two other instances as like local XNAT instances. Uh, since we used and adapted the XNAT plugin, the current development includes communication between the XNAT instances that, um, when I say like communication between the XNAT instances is to sync the projects from a local XNAT uh, in a, any geographical location to the centralized XNAT instance, which is, which is uh, at HPC for AI right now. So since there are some limitations on this plugin, we customize the plugin in such a way that it accept the connection between Across the versions, right now the version is 1.8.4 on XNAT and uh, we worked also the previous versions because um, we have to consider all the uh, versions that are going to sync with us. And also installation types, we have different types of installation for XNAT, which is one is Vagrant and one is Docker Compose. So considering all these things, we, we uh, developed this XSync plugin that enables automatic synchronization of image data sets from a project on XNAT instance to a project in the second instance. Uh, Xsync is configurable to ensure that only desired data is delivered to the central XNAT. And if required data is properly de-identified and that is delivered to a preset schedule. So uh, the workflow is like you deploy a Xsync plugin on the source XNAT 
and create a project on the destination central X map, and you you sync the all the subjects on your uh, uh, local X map to the central X map. So you need to log into the X map. And as a, of course, as a project project owner, you can sync the project to the central. We have to go to uh, manage. I'll show you the small uh, demo about like our screen recording of how this works. Uh, we have to go to the manage tab, navigate to Xing configuration. And when you click on the begin configuration, this is the pop-up, which is on the left of the screen. Uh, you have various options like the destination XNAT server. Uh, the project at the destination and sync frequency and uh, whether you can you have to anonymize the images or not there is a uh, script uh, for anonymization of the images uh, the sample script is I'll, I'll be sharing this uh, presentation to you with you guys and uh, there is a uh, sample script to hide what 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 data you want to an anonymize um, so after you select like uh, after you fix all the settings and then you click on sync now, you can uh, check the synchronization status uh, that is going from your local to central. And here is uh, the sync history that uh, that will be uh, saved at the source. So you can you can see the uh, sync whether it is uh, completed or not, failed, and how many subjects are uh, uploaded. And here, for example, we have a, a, a sync that is set every hour. So every hour, like 11.30, 12.30, it is like automatically done irrespective of, uh, you know, this is for the test purpose, but once it goes live, like you can, you can put it for a weekly or monthly, depends on how frequently you're uploading your projects and uh, uploading your subjects in the project. So um, a small a screenshot about like comparing the source and destination. I mean, the local instance and the destination, for example, I have the local instance on my right and the destination on the left. Uh, so you have uh, synced only like out of five, uh, out of six subjects that we have, we think like five, uh, you can see all the metadata information is uh, getting synced across uh, the local and the central. So to, to keep track of uh, which local instance is feeding the central XNAT instance or to which node or image center provides specific data sets, we, are, we, are, we added like new custom variables like imaging facility, EUBI node uh, to keep track of this information basically. So we made some mandatory fields like institution name, EUBI node. Uh, I'll show you the metadata list that we uh, prepared for this purpose to make sure the owner of the project provides all the information that is mandatory of the project at the central XNAT instance. So we combine using these two plugins um, that we like that customizes the XNAT that we develop. It will be possible to sync the information from the local instance, say the source, to the destination, say the central XNAT, and also to have this precise information about each project is being synced using our metadata, which makes it easy to search and filter the projects. So reusable image data set requires annotation, definition of minimal metadata information to annotate image data set. As a proof of concept, we defined the first list of 30 metadata describing several aspects of an image data set including steady information institution, as I mentioned before, again, like there are a lot of metadata information, like number of subjects, imaging modality, like MRI, uh, PET, like whatever uh, the imaging modality is. And to achieve this, uh, we first created and deployed a new running plugin for the XNAT instance in the local, uh, implemented yet new UI to use uh, uh, like to add the metadata information while creating a new project, modified the UI on the on the index page where you can uh, query the metadata using the key value pair that that is saved when you are creating a new project. So we first developed a prototype uh, that is that looks uh, similar to the XNAT and these functionalities uh, into a I mean try to put the functionalities in the dedicated XNAT plugin.
So uh, the metadata th list that I was explaining are around like 30 of them. We have uh, categorized into steady information, demographics, uh, medical, biological, chemical, and imaging. You have like, this is a, a key value pair like that I was mentioning before. Like you can have institution with the University of Torino, like whatever institution you are from. Like all this information will be stored when you're creating a new project. So this is the UI of the prototype, like where you put all the information uh, while creating a new project. And this is the home screen of the XNAT where the metadata, this extra uh, metadata plugin uh, that pro, uh, enables us to search the metadata uh, according to the uh, categories that we mentioned and the value that is given. So you can filter the projects accordingly from this uh, search bar. So here is a small video uh, demo, like uh, I'll, I'll put it more high quality. So once you log into the XNAT, so you have the metadata that is listed, like there is a possibility to add more. For now, we have just around 30 of the metadata uh, terms, uh, metadata elements. And then like, this is the new project page in which uh, there are a lot of required fields like image uh, institution name, which is going to use to uh, see which institution is going to put the uh, subjects in this. And there are like a lot of uh, uh, metadata fields that are required and some are mo most of them are optional. So this is the user interface of the new project. Um, I think it is playing again. Okay, just, yeah. Uh, so uh, during uh, the development of, during the development of this, uh, uh, can you see it still? Yeah. So the challenges that we faced during development of uh, uh, this particular pl uh, metadata plugin is the API development that accept metadata and making it searchable. Uh, the reason uh, is because existing XNAT algorithm creates table and API uh, tables in the database and the APIs according to the defined classes. Till now, there is no data type uh, which let us add custom fields of XNAT or the metadata at the project level. We try to fix it by looking for like testing several alternative solutions. Uh, like at the end, we contacted, uh, contacted the Rick Herrick, the lead developer of XNAT who confirmed adding the metadata at project level is extremely difficult right now on the project level. Uh, but the dedicated APIs will be implemented in the next release of the September, I mean, next release of the XNAT, which is in the end of September, around uh, September this year. So below is the response. I'm just attaching you the response of the uh, Rick that he mentioned that there will be a new uh, version, which is gonna make it more easy uh, to put also the metadata or the custom variable information in the project level. So, so coming to the overall achievements, implementation of federated XNAT across several nodes and um, XNAT versions and instances is uh, done. Um, implementation and deployment of XNAT plugin to store metadata information uh, and development of new UI for adding metadata information at project level and of a new query box to search such information at metadata level to populate the information of specific projects that has uh, metadata keywords that match to the search keys, the projects that match to the search keys. So the next steps would be like uh, to evaluate whether to deploy the XNAT instance in the embassy cloud or keep it in the central XNAT inside high computing center that is HPC for AI. Term hosting and services. Uh, to finalize the plugin once uh, the new XNAT version will be released in the third quarter of the year. Um, to share the plugins, uh, once we, we complete these two plugins, we are ready to share the plugins across the community and, we're, and, and the institutions which are interested to collaborate and ask them to sync their image data sets to test the efficiency of the system for the large, large scale synchronization. 
Um, so these are our next steps uh, that we so thank you so much for your uh, presence, patience. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think I'm on time. Thank you so much, Kathy. We've got lots of questions in the chat, so I'm going to start to work through those and we'll see how far we get. I was really interested in your metadata standard and your, um, your implementation and lots of other people are too. So the first question is from Petter Holler, who's asking whether this metadata model is synced with DICOM. Um, he's using DICOM, uh, my Avis based imaging metadata model, and I was wondering about the render image uh, standard as well. So do you have syncing with other image standards? No, uh, for, for now, XNAT works on DICOM. So uh, we are working on DICOM format. So all this uh, metadata information is like of DICOM format, no question. Okay. Yeah. So I think there's an extended piece there about the Mayabis imaging metadata model, which is sort of DICOM based, but perhaps it's not DICOM itself. Um, it'd be worth looking in the chat if you don't know what yeah, that uh, is. Are the metadata field names? Uh... No, it's the first question. So you need to scroll up to Petra's question at 9.29. Okay, nine. Um, no, I have... uh, maybe maybe I can ask directly. Certainly, please do, Petra. Yeah. Um, the, the the question was uh, if you have one-to-one uh, -one mapping between the metadata that you showed, and it was not clear to me, to be honest, uh, how the mapping uh, is done there. Uh, if you have one-to-one -one mapping to DICOM for each of those metadata elements, uh, then the rest of my question is uh, irrelevant because uh, then it gets also automatically mapped to the Miabis okay. DICOM. It's, it's, yeah. What you said is perfectly correct because we are using DICOM, so it is like perfectly mapped and uh, okay. okay. So nicely interoperable. Thank you very much. So the next question is from Katrina Exeter, and she has asked: Are the metadata field names and the contents of the metadata fields um, taken from vocabularies or ontologies? Uh, can I read the question? Like uh, sure. Um, I do, yes, you can. It's from Katrina, and it was posted at nine thirty. Uh, I can see only from messages from 10, 4 a.m. I don't know some. Ah, uh, okay. I don't know why that would be. Um, it might be that it's not showing up for you because we're a panelist and it's in the general chat. But, but, okay. but, but I think it is also answered in a way by the DICOM because DICOM uh, has ontologies. I mean, there are ontologies around DICOM. But I was wondering about the chemistry actually. So <clears throat> the, the labels and things and also the biological data. Um, that looked like it was free text metadata to me. Is it linked to an ontology or is there potential to link it to an ontology? So. Kranti, did you hear the question? Or? No, uh, can you please repeat me? Sorry. Certainly. I... So the, when you are using your metadata standard, there is some free text. It looks like free text for, for example, the names of the labels or some of the biological pieces like tumor or you know, other information yes. about the biology of the sample. And yes. Katrina is asking if those free texts are mapped to an ontology or if you have plans to do that. Yeah, we will be um, adding to the ontology, like since uh, we just uh, figured out like the first 30 of metadata elements that we that I showed you just now. And uh, we will be adding uh, more metadata information, like whatever is, uh, is helpful to make the search more efficient and like more narrowed down to the particular project any researcher is searching for. Sure. Well, EOS Flice has services that you could use for that as well. So we'll be happy to talk to you about those. Um, another question from Petter. Uh, do you want to ask this one yourself, Petter? We can't hear you, Petty. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yes. Yes. Is, is, uh, is the system uh, capable of working with uh, personal data, like pseudonymized data, or is it meant for anonymized data only? And if yes, uh, for uh, personal data as well, how do you deal with the data protection? Uh, okay, uh, basically the first uh, level of uh, anonymization is done in the, I mean, we are talking about the uh, synchronization between two different, uh, uh, levels like okay one is your local local instance of xnat and the other is the central so uh, when the when the project is being uploaded in the local uh, we have a anonymizing scripts uh, i i said like i'll share you the presentation and there is a script which has a lot of entities that you can uh, anonymize just by adding the number 
so uh, there you can anonymize and also when you're syncing the data to the central XNAT, you can you can uh, add the script so that all the uh, personal information will be not stored in the central XNAT, but you can still have it in your local XNAT. I hope Thank you. that answers your question. We'll get to the topic also in my presentation later on. Ah, okay. Right. Great. Um, I think some people cannot see all the questions. So what we will do is we will save them and we will distribute them afterwards to make sure that any that we did not get to, um, you can answer offline. I'm going to take one last question, which is from Henning Hermia. Are you able to share only the metadata, leaving the image data where it's where it originated from for access after authorization? Yeah, I can see the message like health data sometimes can't leave the. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that is what uh, the anonymization that I was mentioning about. Uh, so you can um, you can just have the image data like hiding all the personal information of any patient like uh, like mice or like any any preclinical uh, things. If you consider like you can hide all the information and then just share the images. I, I think the question was the. The converse, can you share the metadata and not share the images? Okay, to, to share, like, uh, to share the metadata information, you mean? To... Yes, but without sharing the images. Without sharing images, uh, basically, uh, we, we our basic idea is to have the uh, scanned files, which are the images. So that is the base that you'll be sharing. So yeah, we will work on it and uh, I will update you next time. Like when, if we can also just share the metadata, keeping the images uh, private. All right, Quincy, thank you very much for the presentation. I love the metadata implementation and we've got lots of good questions, which uh, feel free to answer in the chat if you can see them and if not, we will save them. We'll yeah. move